Hello and welcome back to our second episode of um, the playthrough of Talisman here, the fourth edition, including this Blood Moon expansion here. And before I commence the gameplay, I want to just briefly go over um, to what happens when you actually meet the werewolf. There's a bit of a difference. So for once, it's it's different when when the werewolf moves at night or when when it moves um, during day. Um, for once, uh, when when a werewolf is passing a player at night and on on the on the board in in any region, then he would stop on the field where another player would be. That doesn't happen when it's at day, but I think I show you that later what this really means. So when the werewolf then actually engages the um, uh, engages the werewolf, then um, you you have to roll a die basically just a normal d6 there are no real fancy fancy dice for um talisman as you might be aware and then you just roll the die whatever and then depending on the um yeah the number you rolled uh, different things are happening for example a one you are going to be a werewolf on your own so you get one of those werewolf or lycanthrope cards here um and i come to that in a second uh, if you roll a 2, then you are losing one life and have to roll again. So this is definitely not so good. On a 3, you are losing a randomly picked uh, follower. If you don't have a follower, you lose a life. But at least you don't have to roll again. Um, on a 4, you uh, the werewolf attacks you with a strength of 8. So also relative tough. And on the roll of 5, the werewolf um, will be teleported to another character of your choice. Um, and he then has to roll a die on see what happens on this table. Good thing is the card does not say that he teleports only in the same region. So apparently he will teleport anywhere. So it might be actually good. On a 6+, plus, and this is really good. And the plus, of course, happens with any um, whatever modify you might have during the game um, then you can choose for once you can heal all your life you can gain back all your um, starting um, fate tokens which is pretty cool you can discard a uh, adventure card from the from the player board might be definitely come in handy sooner or later or you can uh, use your next uh, movement to teleport in to any field in the same region so apparently even good things can happen um, when engaging the werewolf. So, but what does it mean when you are the werewolf? So, as mentioned, you get this lycanthrope card here, and basically what happens is um, de explained very detailed on this card. First of all, all your additional benefits only happen during night. For once, your attack power for physical combat is um, two points more. So that's definitely a good thing. Always, every time when you land on a on a field with another character, um, this is only um, valid for the um, first two regions. Apparently, you have to attack this character, so you cannot choose whether to engage the field itself or um, um, to engage character. In a normal gameplay, when you're not a werewolf, when you land on a field with another character, you can choose if you want to engage the the field, so drawing an adventure card or if you want to interact with the um, other player. In most cases, this would be to fight him or to whatever, steal from him. And so in this case, when you're aware of at night, you have to fight him. And always when you defeat another character um, in, in, a, in this fight, the other player will also need to roll a die on uh, for this um, werewolf table here. And let's see, has to face the results. And another thing, of course, I have to mention that, just uh, read that as well, nearly forgot that. Um, you don't get the, the normal um, reward from this fight. So this is also so definitely a down, down, downside of this being a werewolf. So normally, of course, you could steal a whatever gold or a follower or, or, or an item from the character. In this case, when you do that during night, so when you are the werewolf, um, apparently, you cannot uh, decide to steal from the other player. So, I think that more or less um, explains it, so let's get over, or let's get back to the board and see how the elf and the monk are doing, and I think elf was a starting player, so let's see what he will do.
before I go to, over to the gameplay, I want to show you my latest spy here, basically. So this um, dice board here, which is very cool. So this is now very nice. So the die stops rolling over the whole board, um, uh, crashing into figures or whatever, destroying it. So this is pretty cool. Not so sure if I will use it every time, because especially for when rolling only one die for the movement roll, might be not necessary. But I just wanted to show you that anyway. But now, really, let's get over to the elf. So the elf um, just had a fight with his um, rubber. And this was a tie, as far as I can remember, so he has to roll again now for the movement. Let's do that on the new board. Okay, that's a two. So he would be allowed to move um, two locations to the right there with the cliffs. Um, and this is not so good. In most cases, this is not so nice. So I think we would rather go to the city. And then I explain you what he can do there. So that's one and two. Two, and let's have a look at the city. So that's the city or the town, not, not so sure. I think it doesn't matter. You can go to the to the medic and or to the doctor. He can heal you um, and up to two life points when you are paying one gold per, per life point. So that's a good way to do that. You can go to the alchemist and the alchemist you can trade in items you no longer use. And for each item you would trade in you gain a gold coin. So good good idea to get some gold and uh, the last thing you can go you can go to the I think it's the, the witch or something like that um, the sorceress whatever and then you have to roll a die and I think this is what we are going to do here because we don't have any um, objects to trade in and we don't need to heal so um, and I play that this way you have to interact with this field one way or the other so let's roll uh, a die and see what happens Okay, six, so that's not too bad. You gain a spell, so this is pretty cool. Let's draw a spell and see what we find. So let's draw the card. So this says, um, I think, chance would be the right term. So this can be played anytime on any player. Um, so it does not have to happen during your turn, so really any time. And normally you just throw the target, rolls a die to see what the effects are. So for once you can get um, a toad for three rounds, so this would be nice. When you roll a two, you're losing a strength point, a three, you're losing a craft point, and it's important the value may never um, drop below your starting value. So, whenever, whatever, for example, if you would play that to the monk and he would, let's say, now roll the die and roll this three, for example, then he would not fall below a talent value of three. That's very important. On the roll of four, you losing all your gold. This might be really tough for the monk as he has three coins already. Um, but there are also some nice things that can happen. On a roll of five, you gain a strength point. And on the roll of six, you gain a life point. So this might also be very nice. And of course, you can always use your um, fate token to re-roll a die here, but you can only do that once. So, um, right now it might not be um, that important, so I think we'd rather wait until the monk has some more um, talent points or strength points. And so the elf has a uh, craft of four, so he's allowed to have two th uh, spells anyway. So, let's do the, give it to the um, inventory of the elf. And let's get over to the monk. Okay, the monk is down here at the sentinel. I think he could have chosen to um, yeah, change his alignment, but we are not going to do that. So let's roll for his movement. So that's a four. Let's see, one, two, three, four. So left would bring him to the um, cliffs. We don't want to go there. And one, two, three, four. Um, this would bring him to the village. And I think that's where we are going to. So let's move him there. So that's one, two, three, and four. So he's now landing on the village here, and um, like the city, you have different options to go for. So for once, you can go to the blacksmith, where you can buy a helmet, a sword, an axe, a shield, or an armor. Remember, the, the monk is not allowed to use any armor or, or weapons in a fight, but he could go for the axe, because the axe could give him a um, right a raft. 
So with this draft you can then cross the to the other region later on. But I think that's too early. The next thing you can do, you can go to the healer and the healer can heal you um, for a price of one gold point per value, which is not too bad, to be honest. And then you would be allowed to go to the mystic. And I think that's what we are going to go for. And there also you have to roll a die and see what happens. So let's do that quickly. That's a one. A one is always bad in this game. So let's see. Um, so that says his alignment changes to evil now. So this is pretty important for him. And let's draw an evil card for him. Right now he has a good alignment, but with this card here, it shows now you will have an evil alignment. That's not really bad. So for both alignments, there are fields that are good or bad in this game. For example, the graveyard is good for a evil or character with an evil alignment, but the chapel is not. Um, so to be honest, I'm not so sure if we should change it. We have the Pantheon in play and maybe he can go there when he rolls the four again in the next turn. And maybe that might be an idea to um, make him good again. But first of all, it's the turn of the elf player now. So the elf is still in the city. And as you can see, the werewolf is not too far from him. Right now, it's still daytime. So none of the players have has um, drawn or has drawn a adventure card. So that's still okay. And of course you can pass the werewolf any time. So when you do that as a player, you don't have to, to engage that. That's only the case when the werewolf moves. And as well, when you land on the field of this um, of the werewolf, you are still allowed to um, engage the, uh, the field itself. So you don't have to engage the werewolf. That really only happens during the werewolf werewolf's movement. So first of all, let's roll a die for the elf here, for his movement. So that's a three, and I think I will go maybe into the direction of the um, robber again. So this is not a problem, so he has to draw then a card. So that's one, two, and three, and let's draw an adventure card. Of course, first of all, we have to flip now the um, time card, so it's now night, so monsters are now one point stronger than uh, in normal play and now let's draw a event card or adventure card here and this says children of the night so first of all it says um, you have to flip the time card to the side of the night what we already did that so we don't flip it again it stays night that where the rules are very clear about additionally any time a character is landing on a field where it says to have to draw one adventure card you have to draw one additional card but this card will be discarded as soon as the day, um, yeah, the day turns, as the day, um, day breaks, basically. But of course, first of all, we have to resolve that. So, but we just keep it here on this field. But nothing really um, other happens during this turn. So let's get back to the monk. So let's roll for the monk movement, who just became evil. <laughs> okay, that's a one. Um, I think he will go in the direction of the Pantheon here. So first of all, we do this one. And then we have to flip the day side. But I think still um, the condition of the um, Children of the Night card is um, still valid. So let me move the camera quickly. So he says you have to draw one adventure card. But the other card says you have to draw two. So we do that. And then... We resolve that and um, discard the Children of the Night card. So let's draw our two cards. Of course we flip now the time card to the day side of it. So first of all we draw on this Shadow Dragon and this um, Witch's Broom. Now it's important this little number on the bottom of the, of the cards and you have to resolve the cards with the lowest value always first. So you cannot just take the witch's broom here and then fight the dragon. No, in this case you have to engage the dragon first because dragon has a 2, the witch's broom is 5. And this is mostly the case so normally the nice little artifacts and um, 
gold and things like that have a relatively high number, whereas the villains or the monsters in this game have a relatively low number. So, but there is one special condition for this shadow dragon. Um, it says, as long as it's day, you can evade the dragon, but he stays here until he's killed. During day, this dragon has a strength of five. And um, you might remember that the monk is also um, has a strength of five because he's allowed to add his graph to the to the strength. But I'm not so sure. Maybe he should really try to do that. Um, could be a good way to gain some um, strength points for leveling up later on. So I think he will try to do that. He has one additional life point, so that should be good for him. Then let's roll the two dice. So again, orange or red for, for, the, for the enemy and the monk has the yellow die. And remember they have both the same amount of strength because of the special ability of the monk. So really the highest die result already decides the fight. So that's a two for the monk, that's a five for the dragon. So that's not a chance, so the monk has to get um, give away one life. And the dragon, of course, stays on the field, but still, um, this is fine for the um, for the monk. So he would still be allowed to get the witch's broom. And this is really a very cool um, artifact. It's a magical object, and it says every time when you're moving during night, you can um, you can get up to, or you can move up to the amount of of the number of dice you rolled. So if you had, normally when you roll a five, you have to move five fields, but with this witch's broom, you can move up to five um, fields. So whatever, one, two, three, four, five. This is very cool, but remember, only during the night, so we would be allowed to take that to the inventory of the um, monk. And this is very, really cool little item that he has found here. He lost a life for that, but it's not too bad. And yeah. Let's see if the elf maybe can steal it from him. So for once we will discard here this Children of the Night card. And then, let me just get away with these dice. We will roll for the elf's movement. Ah, okay, sorry. I forgot one thing. Um, I have to roll, of course, for the movement of the werewolf because the monk did that. So let me re-roll that so that's really now for the movement of the werewolf, and that's a three. And I think the monk will send this werewolf one, two, three, closer to the um, elf here, but still far away. But now let's really move for the elf. So that's a four, one, two, three, four, and that's pretty cool. So he will move to the hills, one, two, three, four. And here he would be allowed to take up to two gold coins from the reserve here into his pocket so that was really a good move for the elf player and let's get back to the monk so let's roll a die for the monk that's also a four and i think this is pretty good because he could also go to the hill so it's one two three and four and as you can see he lands also on this treasure pit here and he would be allowed to go as well for the coins of course he could now really decide um whether to um, yeah engage the field or to engage the the character in this case of course he would go for the gold okay so one more time let's roll for the elf's movement here so that's a three let me quickly check one two three so left would bring him to the graveyard that's definitely not a good choice and one two three this will bring him to the cliffs that's a tough call and I think he might now really considering to use a fate token so he would be allowed to re-roll his die. That's a two, that's way better and I think in this case he will go to the right and will go to the forests. So let's first of course flip the movement to the, uh, the, the time card to the knight. So we are now moving during night and now let's draw an adventure card and this is pretty cool. And this is the Apprentice of the Warlock and this is really cool. So when you don't have a, uh, already a quest from the from the Warlock, not so sure if it's the Warlock, 
if it's a sorcerer, I think you know, so the guy in the middle region, uh, you are now allowed to get one um, quest from him. If you if you already have one, then you might be allowed to do another turn after this one, though this is pretty cool. But as soon as a character takes over a quest, then he would be allowed, um, He then this guy would be um, discarded. So I think I'm really considering to take over the quest. So uh, normally you only can um, claim these when you go to the cave of the of the warlock here but in this case you met his apprentice so that's fine as well but still you have to roll a die as usual for this game and let's see what quest we have to do. So that's a four and the four says um, you have to discard a magical object. So as soon as we find a magical object, then we could discard it. And as soon as we have um, fulfilled this quest, we would be teleported to the cave of the warlock. And then we could claim either a talisman or a quest reward card. Not too bad. But first of all, let's discard the warlock, uh, the apprentice. So this is now gone. So um, I have to note that down somewhere, to be honest. So I think I will do that and that we know that we have this quest in our pocket. So it might be now really a cool idea to engage the monk and to get him the witch's broom because this is a magical object. And then we could discard it, but it's already a very powerful item. So not so sure if you should do that. Um, but yeah, let's see what we can do. But now first let's get over to the monk. So let's roll for the monk. Remember it's night, so he can use his witch's broom now and can move up to the die hero. <laughs> in this case, this is pretty simple. So, but I think um, he decides to go, or oh, let me check. Um, no, I think he really will go to the Pantheon here, to the right one. And there he will take a card with a good alignment again. So this is here, I take it, let me just, show you that so I took it from here you can trust me so I would now put it on the player board of the of the monk but I think I don't need to do that as we just need to discard the card with a evil alignment so he's now good but there's still one more thing to do so it's still night so the werewolves have to move and that's a two, and I think I will come closer. One, two. Let me show that to you. So he moved here, closer to the player. So let's roll the movement for the elf. So that's also a two. Let me think. So it's night. So that's the shadow dragon that's here on this field here. During night he would have a strength of 7, whereas the elf only has a strength of 3. So there is only little chance that he can win that. So, but I think this is easy. It's two spaces to the left. Let me show that to you. 1 and 2. There are, there's this treasure pit again, so we would be allowed to take 2 additional gold from the reserve here. So that's so this um, treasure pit would, would allow one additional visit, then it would be discarded. So there is no um, adventure card to draw, so it's still night. Um, let's see what the monk will do. Let's roll the die. So that's also a two. I think he will go once more to the chapel. That's one and two. Remember, he's now good, so nothing really bad happens, but he has to, he can roll now a die. And as he's the monk, he would be allowed to add one to his result. Maybe not, sorry, um, because it's still night, so he could, no, 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 of course, don't, I don't do that. I take that back. So I, he can move up to two spaces, and he will, of course, use only one um, step to get the last two gold coins from here. That's of course more important. So the treasure pit is now discarded and yeah this was it. So he used the broom rice wisely in this case. So let's give the die back to the elf. So let's 
roll a die. That's a three. Um, let me see. One, two, three. To the right is the graveyard. Mm. He will not go there, but he does not want to. Ah, oh, that's tough. This can be real tough now. Um, Okay, no, I think he will try that, so he will go to the one, two, three, and will go to the cliffs. So, for once, he's now pretty close to the werewolves. He's just one field away. And second, he now has to roll a die. That's very typical or usual for this um, game. So, let's roll the die here. So, that's a five, and this is in most cases not too bad. And it says, you are safe, there are no effects here on this card, so he's fine, but it's still night. So then let's move the die again for the... That's a five. One, two, three, four, five. To the left he would go to the rubber, not so sure if you want to do that. And one, two, three, four... One, two, three, four, five. To the right, he could go to the village. But I think he would go rather to the forest here in between. So let me show that to you. So he would land here. One, one, two. Remember, he is allowed to move up to three spaces during the night. But now he has to draw an adventure card. So now it's daytime again. And let's draw an adventure card. Okay, let's. Do that, so <laughs> come on, two bags of gold. So you trade this card in again, uh, immediately to gain two gold coins. Oh, come on, and then this will be discarded. Okay, let's do that. So here are the two gold coins. I will put that to the players. I will just have to show that to you. So the monk already has seven, is it seven? Yeah, seven gold coins in his pocket. I've never seen that such a rich character at the start of the game. And now he would gain two additional items, uh, gold coins. So he's really a rich monk. Um, yeah, let's see that. So it's daytime, but again, it's the movement of the elf player. Remember, the elf is close to the werewolf. So let's roll that. So that's a six. Let me check where we could land. So to the right there would be again the graveyard. Of course he does not want to go there because he would lose a life point. But on the other side, uh, six spaces, there are the hills and I think that's where he's going to. So that's one, oops, one, two, three, four, five and six. So let's draw a card. So that's the guardian angel. That's a follower. That does not sound too bad. For once, the guardian angel will never accompany, accompany a um, evil character. In this case, that's not a problem. The elf is good. Um, you are allowed to discard the guardian angels in a kite in a fight, physical or um, yeah, um, craft fight basically. And when you when your attack value is small is, is lower than the attack value of your opponent, when you do that. Um, the, 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 the fight is automatically a tie, but then the guardian angel is gone. So this is maybe, might be a good card for later on. But of course, and this would be a, a tie and then you don't get any, um, experience points. So let's put that to the elves, um, follower side. And of course we have to flip this to nighttime again which is pretty good for the monk and yeah let's see what he will do then so let's roll the die and this is a one um to the right there is still the graveyard which is not so good for the monk to the left there is the pantheon and i think he will go there so that's a one let me show that to you he could still decide to change his alignment, but I think he just changed that, so he's not interested in doing so. But, of course, he has to roll for the werewolf movement. And remember, it's still night. So the werewolf is down here. Let's roll the die. Oh, that's 
you know, it's only one, so not really strong. So that could have been a small chance that he would meet or engage the elf, but he does not do that. But still, he sends the werewolf into the direction direction of the elf, and yeah, it's now again the elf's turn. So again, let's roll the die, and that's a four, one, two, three, four. Ah, he could go to the tavern, that might be interesting. And the other side, I think this will be one, two, three, four. Um, this would be the field where the werewolf is on and it's night, so the robber would have a strength of five, whereas he has only a, a strength of three. So I think he will go to the tavern. So that's one, two, three, and four. And as usual, we will roll a die to see what happens here in the tavern. So that's a six. In most cases, this is not so good. And this is something... Oh! He can bring you to the temple, and the temple would be in the inner region. So, let me show that. So this would be here. He would go there for free. Not so sure if he wants to do that, because the inner region is tougher normally, and no, it's good. I think the offer is good, but I think we decline that. It doesn't really make any sense at this point in time. Okay, was a good move, So, but let's get back to the monk. So, roll the die. That's a four. It's still night, so he could go up to four spaces. One, two, three. Four, uh, huh. oh, I think he will go one space here to the left, to the hills, because of his witch's broom and it's still night. And yeah, let's do that and just draw an adventure card. So for once, we flip the time card to the day side. And this now says that's a uh, yeah, witch of wrath or something like that and has a craft of four. And this she has a special ability and it says if the her attack roll of the bit is lower than her craft, then you have to roll a die and add this die to the um to the attack roll. This is pretty tough. Good thing is now um we have daytime, so that the craft is only three. And the monk has also a craft of three, so let's try to resolve the fight here. So red for the witch and yellow for the monk. Punch. So that's a one and a two, so this is good for him. But the card already said it, um, she has a craft of three and... Um, can now roll again and we add this die result to her attack rolls. So right now she has this one and this two, that's a three, plus her three, that's six, and the monk also has a three because of his craft, his all the total value of six, so that's a tie. Of course, the witch stays here as long as she's not defeated. At least he didn't lose a life point. Back to the elf. That's a one. And I think he will go here to the fields and, yeah, has to draw an adventure card. For once, we flip, of course, the time card back to the knight. And let's draw the card. And this says Breath Hunter. This is tough. So you have to take this follow with you. You have no choice. And it says, when you are defeated in a fight, a physical or a craft fight, so then, and you're losing a life point, you're going to be killed. Hey, what about that? But you're allowed to discard this uh, Breath Hunter as soon as you killed the first creature or character in a fight. That's really tough, but we have no choice. We have to take him with us. That's really tough, of course, um, because he could really easily kill our elf. But let's roll for the werewolf movement. Oh, come on. That's also only a one. So let's send him here. And yeah, I think it's now again the turn of the monk. So roll the die. That's a six. Six is not too bad as it is night and he would be allowed to move up to six 
fields and I think he will go here one, two, to the woods. So for once it will be day again and let's draw an adventure card and this is an ogre. Luckily uh, it's day so the ogre has a decreased strength of only four whereas the monk has a combined strength of five because of his special ability. So let's roll the dice here. So that's a four for the monk, a one for the ogre, so that's more than enough. So he actually defeated the ogre and he can claim this as a trophy. Remember when he has a total amount of uh, seven strength point as trophies in his inventory, he could trade that in for another strength point. Not too bad. But I think it's still the move of the elf and he has a really tough call. So he really has to evade fights wherever he can as long as he has not a chance to win those because as soon as he loses a life point he would be killed because of his follower, the breath hunter. So let's roll a die. So let's say six. One, two, three, four, five and six. Here's a dragon. One, two, three, four, five, six. There are the fields and I think he will go to the left to the fields. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Once it's night again, which is not so good because every um, every creature would be stronger, but let's see what adventure card he will move, uh, draw. So then let's draw our adventure cards and this is pretty good. This is a treasure rumor. Again, we have to roll a die and then we have to put the amount of gold coins to this card and let's say two. Again we have to put some gold on a card and this is <laughs> I really don't get that. Um, and what really happens every time a player would roll a, a one in the same region it really only counts in the same region um, then he would be allowed to claim one gold coin from this card and of course as, as soon as all the gold coins are depleted here the card will be discarded. Hmm, not too bad. I think the elf really will die. We're very very rich. So, but first of all, let's move our uh, monk here. That's a four. Remember, he still can go up to um, four space. That's so one, two, three, four. Um, one, two, three. So there's this witch and there's this chapel. I think he might go to the chapel as there he might get a, a spell here yeah let's do that so that's one two and three and then we will roll again for the prayer here remember he can add one to that so that's a two he adds one to that so it would give him a total of three but it says here the prayer will be ignored on the roll of three so Nothing really bad happened, and let's see what the elf can do. Oh, that's again a six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So this will bring him to the fields to the right, and I think he will do that. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Unfortunately, he's not on a forest location, but yeah, let's face this um, field space here. Okay, so for once, of course, we have to um, flip the time track to the um, day side and then we have to roll our die here. And this is a night horror or night terror. And this is not good. So it has a craft of five. And if you kill this during night, then yeah, you can flip it to the other side, the day side, and you gain a craft but it's day and we could fight that now but I think it's not really a good idea. Of course it's daytime so it only in brackets has a craft of five but we only have a craft of four and if we lose this fight we die. So I think I would rather um, discard our follower here so the guardian angel and it says um, you can discard that if you attack value. Ah, oh, oh, the attack value. Attack value, that's a combined attack value, so we could try that. I think this is really the combined 
attack value. Let me check that. Yes, this indeed the attack value, so I really can roll that in advance and then still can decide to discard the guardian angel here. I think this is what we are going to do. So let's roll our dice. So we have a craft of four. So, and this is a six, so definitely we would have lost now the fight, so we can now discard this guardian angel, and now this fight is a tie, and the night horror will stay on his field, and this concludes the turn of the elf. That's really not looking too good for the elf, but let's see. Move for the um, monk. So it's daytime, so he's not allowed to move up to, and I think he will go one, two, three spaces to the right, where he finds the woods. So one, it will be night, and then let's draw our adventure card, and okay, this is tough. <laughs> wow. Um, so this is a stranger, and this um, border um, guardian, I would call her, she will stay here until the rest of the game. And you can discard any number of trophies to gain one strength or one talent for that. And this is really tough. Of course, he will go for the ogre in this case. So he will discard the ogre and therefore will gain an additional craft. So let's put the craft value over here. So he's now a craft of four. This is really not too bad. And yeah. Let's give it back to the elf player. Remember, the guardian here stays until the end of the game or if another event, um, whatever, make her disappear to the discard pile. This happens more than often. So let's roll the die for the elf. That's one, two, three, and four. This would be the fields. One, two, three, four. This would also be relatively um, easy. Um, to be honest, I'm thinking of... No, I think we'll go here to the one, two, three, four, to the plains. Here, this is this tile here, and then we would flip the event, uh, the daytime uh, card. So it's now again day, and now let's draw our adventure card. So let's draw our card, and that says that's a student of the darkness, and a good character can this cannot take this follower into his crew, basically. So he has to stay here. And during night, um, you have always one um, spell, as long as your, your talent um, is allowing that. Oh, that's nice. But this could be cool, but this is a only good for the evil player. So he might read. This might be definitely a business case to go for changing the alignment to evil. This might be really a chance for the elf but i think one thing he might do now the elf i think he will use his spell here this says chance so he will um chant and chant the the monk and the monk now has to roll a die so let's do that so that's a one and what happens on the roll of one ah that's good so the monk will be a toad for three rounds that's nice so for once we will exchange this figure with a toad. This is very nice. And then he gains this uh, toad card. And there are really some very, um, yeah, I think really some cool changes, at least for the elven player, that really affects the gameplay for the monk here. For once, he has to drop all of his objects, all of his goals, and everything like that to the field where he became the toad. This is really a gold pool here. So, one, two, and three. So this is pretty cool. Of course, he also needs to drop his um, witch's broom also to this field here. Let me just show that to you. Still, the guardian has a um, a lower number, so it still has to go there first. Then you only have a strength of one, a talent of one. Good thing is you gain your original strength and craft back when when you get the um, let's say a 
human body again. So he remember that he's now three rounds to that, and he can only move one space um, during a turn. So he doesn't roll a die. So in this case, the werewolf would not move. At least this is how I would interpret it. You are not allowed to use the other craft and strength value. You are not can gain any any spells or, or use spells, but you could get it back. And yeah, and. After your career as a toad, you gain. Um, you will buy. You, you will be yourself, but without gold, object, or followers. Yeah, and still you would lose um, life points. So this is you could lose your life points when being a toad. Hmm, not so nice. So let's replace now the card for the monk. And I think right now everything is. Balance in balance again, so the elf can look a little bit more optimistic into the gaming future here. As this was the turn of the elven player, so it's now the turn of the monk. And I think, yeah, he will of course stay close to that location, so he will move here to the pantheon. I think he will more or less go back and forth here on this on this side. So this was already the turn of the um, monk. So he could now decide to go for... I think this is maybe something he might be actually doing. He might go for a neutral alignment as a toad. I know, I think, no, we, we, we stay at we are. So I think this is, this is okay for him, so nothing, nothing really bad happened. So this was already the turn of the monk, so very fast, very quick, not many options to take here. And I think I will yeah, conclude the game, the session for today. I think this was a good ending for that. I would just make a note, so I will use this wooden die here and put it on the card of the toad. So I put it already to a two, so he's again for two rounds um, a toad and I think in the next episode then we will dive more into the gameplay of Talisman. I hope you enjoyed the session so far so there are really not really much climaxes or so. There were one or two fights but I think only yeah, the, of course only the monk won one and he gained a craft point for that because of this stranger here. Uh, the elf is a bit in a danger, so we have to keep in mind um, he still has this follower, this breath hunter. Uh, but still he has this quest from the um, sorcerer, from the warlock, which is good. So he could really go decide to go here for the witch's broom and might think of um, discarding this. So this is pretty cool. And yeah, until the next time, I hope you enjoyed it and until then... Bye-bye.